but I want to focus today on a story uh, that happened. It's not about a missing man, but it's about an unsolved murder that happened in Hazard, Kentucky, in uh, Perry County. And this article that I'm reading from is from WYMT News, which is the news station here in eastern Kentucky. And it is, uh, this was published by Will Puckett on January 10th, 2019. And um, so I'm just going to read from this article. It has been 11 years since Marion Estep was shot and killed on the Hal Rogers Parkway. Estep was a preacher in Perry County and was the grandfather of the newly sworn-in Perry County Sheriff Joe Engel. We've made peace with it and we know that he was a man of God and we're happy, we're happy and confident knowing that he is with his father, said Sheriff Engel. Before his grandfather's untimely death, Engel remembers a conversation where his grandfather told him that he would preach at his funeral. The first time I actually preached was at his funeral, said Engel. Since that day, he has followed his grandfather's footsteps heading his own church in Perry County every Sunday. But his second calling now being the head lawman in Perry County is where he is hoping to honor his grandfather. I know he is looking down, and I know he is a little bit teary-eyed thinking about how it would make him so overjoyed and proud. Hopefully we can get our hands on some evidence and get in there and dig and open up a cold case. Um, I think it would be a great thing in my term as sheriff to bring the killer to justice. Hiring someone in forensics hoping to bring justice for his grandfather. Now this, so now I'm going to read from Unsolved Appalachia, which is a great website for anybody, amateur sleuths or anybody who's just into unsolved cases of missing or murdered people in Appalachia. And this is published January 26, 2021 by the user Riddles in the Dark. At around 4 p.m. on January the 10th, 2008, two hospital maintenance workers were traveling along the Hal Rogers Parkway in Perry County, Kentucky, when they spotted a white 1994 Chrysler on the shoulder of the road near exit 56. The hood of the car was propped up, so they assumed that there was someone having car trouble and pulled over to offer assistance. What they found was 76-year-old Marion Estep partially slumped out of his car. He had been shot once in the head and three times in the chest, yet he was still clinging to life. He was transported to ARH Hospital in Hazard, where he passed away shortly later. Police stated there was evidence of a struggle inside the car and that Marion had been killed with his own gun, which they found underneath his body. Okay. His license and other personal items were found in the floorboard of the car, and according to his family, his Bible was the only thing missing. Now, why would someone take someone's Bible? This is a man who was a preacher. He, um was, you know, married, long-term long married to his wife, had, had a family. Um, he was known by his community to be someone who would be very helpful. He was known as someone who would pick up a hitchhiker um, and offer them help, offer them a meal if they needed it. So this was a theory that, that a lot of the people in the area thought about, was that maybe he had picked up a hitchhiker but the fact that his Bible was taken, um, I, I don't know what the, unless it was a souvenir, you know, I mean, that doesn't make any sense, but, you know, I don't know. Um, Marion had a habit, okay, here we go, this, 
Marion had a habit of picking up hitchhikers, which his family had warned him about numerous times, but Marion saw it as an opportunity to show people kindness. His family believes that whoever his murderer was, they obviously did not know him, because if they did, they would have known that he would have been more than willing to give them money, a ride, a meal, anything he could do to help. At 2.30 p.m., Marion was in the Chavez community visiting one of his sons. He left with the intention of heading back home in Jackson, Kentucky, which is in Breathitt County, and that's probably about 25 to 30 miles from Hazard. For some reason, he turned right instead of left, which would have taken him back to Hazard. So this is what the theory is, is that as he was driving from Hazard toward Jackson, that he picked up a hitchhiker. Now, if this person was hitchhiking back towards Hazard, he would have had to have did a U-turn, crossed the road, and went and picked them up. And some people believe that's probably what had happened. Um... Keep in mind, a lot of people say keep this in mind, that this was January. It was probably cool weather. It was in the evening time. Well, it was 2.30 p.m., and he had left his son's home in the, in the evening time and headed back towards Jackson. For some reason, he turned left, he turned right, which would have taken him back to Hazard, okay? of a map that shows you here is where Marion's car was found. Now this is Jackson. This is where he was going, heading home. This is the Hal Rogers Parkway, this blue line. And he was in Chavez right here at his son's and he was heading back to Jackson but instead he headed back towards Hazard and was found along the Hal Rogers Parkway. And I know so, people ask, did he pick up his murderer on 28, or was he headed home when he stopped and picked up someone along Highway 15? Now, Highway 15 is the highway that takes you right into Breathitt County, into Jackson. So, if he picked someone up on 15, he would have been... He would have had to have traveled at least 25 miles or so back to Hazard at least 20 miles back toward Hazard um, on to, to get to where he was found. Because he was found on the Howe Rogers Parkway um, in the area, it was like the Combs area. So, I don't know. That's the theory that he, was, he saw someone hitchhiking back toward Hazard and he felt bad for them. He wanted to help them. He they don't know that it was anyone he knew because, like they said, he was often known to pick people up and give them rides, you know. But that was it. Um, he was found along the roadway, shot three times in the chest, once in the head. He was still alive when they found him, but they didn't get to him in time, I guess, to really get information. So here's another, um, this is from the Hazard Police Department, and this is um, basically just the same story. Um, January the 10th, 2008, police found Marion East Step shot several times in his car near exit 56 along the Hal Rogers Parkway. He died later that day at Hazard Hospital, Hazard ARH. This murder occurred in broad daylight, and it is suspected that Marion knew his killer. Well, that's a theory. Some people believe he was driving along, and he recognized somebody from Breathitt County, from Jackson area where he lived, and that he saw this person walking along the road back toward Hazard, and he thought, well, I'm going to give him a ride. Some people believe he didn't know the person, that it was just some random stranger, but I don't know. I mean, why would... I'm, nobody knows why anybody does these things, but 
is it possible that once they got back toward Hazard and he was going to let this person out of his car where they said they were going, that they that they didn't want to get out of the car, then a struggle, an argument happened. I mean, how would this per where, where was his gun? Was his gun in the glove box where a lot of people keep their guns? Or, you know, did he have his gun laying out? Or, I, I don't know. I wasn't there. I mean, I'm just, this all just questions, you know. But, even though years have passed, we believe the person responsible for this murder is still out there. And may even be reading this. Now is the time to bring closure. Even though the original investigating agency is the Perry County Sheriff's Office, you can submit any information you have to the Hazard Police Department. It is still considered a cold case, of course. There's been no... Um, he, was a, he was 76 years old when he died. And let's see. Here is, see, this is just a find a grave. I don't know. Marion E. Stepp was born July the 1st, 1931. He died January 11th, 2008. He is buried in the E. Stepp Family Cemetery in Chavez in Prairie County, Kentucky. Um... Eastern Kentucky preacher Marion E. Stepp was known for picking up hitchhikers. He viewed them as lost souls in need of kindness. Just a few weeks ago, this is written a while back, while at a revival in Indiana, E. Stepp picked up a man he didn't know and took him to Dairy Queen. He bought the man's lunch and gave him a $20 bill. His family told him he should not be doing that, but the 76-year-old said, he would just shrug it off, said one of his three daughters. We told him that times have changed and that people are dangerous. But he saw it as an opportunity to spread God's message. Now Estep's family thinks his kindness may have led to his death. But let's go back to where we were. Please say to hazard, well, I've already told this part. Please say two maintenance workers found Estep slumping partially in and partially out of his 94 Chrysler, which was parked on the shoulder of the Hal Rogers Parkway. The preacher was still clinging to life when the maintenance workers stopped to check on him. He was taken to the hospital and he died around 3 a.m. So see if this was around 3 p.m. He lived for a while but I, I get, I'm assuming that he was probably in surgery and maybe never did recover enough to speak. I don't think it says what time of day it was when they stopped. I'll go back and double check that. According to his family, well, according to police, police have calmed the area of Eastern Kentucky searching for his killer but have come up with few answers. We've had some tips and we've chased down some leads, but right now it is still a mystery. According to his family, Estep was last seen around 2.30 p.m. Thursday when he was visiting one of his four sons in the Chavez community in Perry County, but had left to go have dinner with his wife at their home in Breathitt County. But instead of turning northbound onto Highway 15 to head to Jackson, Estep instead turned south traveled about six miles and turned on to the Hal Rogers Parkway. So the theory is, is that whoever he picked up, um, he must have come upon this person very soon after leaving his son's home. 
uh, Chavis to um, so Chavis to Jackson is 28 miles. So the theory is is that some were because of the time frame of when he left his son's home. Um, he he probably picked this person up somewhere within that little distance between his home and the exit to go toward Jackson. I don't know. Um, I don't know how far the exit is from the son's home. But it says he traveled six miles and turned onto the Hal Rogers Parkway. So apparently the exit going towards Jackson, um, he must have picked someone up. He, he must have seen someone, whether it was someone he did know or did not know. My theory, and probably that of the police, is that he saw someone walking or hitchhiking back toward Hazard. Whether he knew them or not, he turned. He got onto the exit going towards Hazard and went back to Hazard, back toward Hazard. So there were signs of a struggle inside of the car. His license and other information was found laying on the floorboard. So that tells me that Whoever this person was probably had grabbed his wallet, went through it, looked for cash, was probably pulling stuff out, looking for cash, and just ended up throwing it all on the floor. Probably was searching through the glove box. Um, his Bible was the only thing missing. East Step had served as pastor of several churches in Perry County, in 55 years of preaching, he never was without that Bible. We can't find it anywhere, said his daughter. He always had it with him. Engel described her father as a loving man. He attended, he attended church five or six times a week and often traveled to other states, such as Indiana and Ohio, to preach at revivals. He always wore leisure suits. You would never see him in a pair of jeans, said his daughter. But he always wore dark sunglasses because he had lost one eye. Despite having only a third grade education, Estep was known for his knowledge of the Bible. He had an uncanny ability to quote verses and tell stories about, uh, from the Bible. Um, there have been times when church would be so full of people coming to hear him talk that they would stand outside and look through the windows. Family members said Estep didn't carry very much cash on him, but would always have a little bit in case someone needed a meal. He would always give money away to those in need if he had it on him. East Step's family believes that he was killed after he picked up a hitchhiker who planned to rob him. Whoever killed him didn't know him. If the person would have just asked him for money, he would have taken them somewhere to get it. And that's pretty much where this story ends at. Um, uh, as stated at the beginning of this video, his, his grandson had just become the sheriff of Prairie County, Kentucky. I don't know if he still is or not. I guess I can look that up. I believe that he is. Story when it happened. I remember always checking back with the news to see if there was any updates and if they had found any information. And as of right now, um, they haven't. But according to this, website, prairiecountysheriff.org, Joe Engel is still the uh, sheriff. Um, he is the son 
of Murray and Estep's daughter, Mary Estep. And um, that's really, I mean, I, this, I guess you could say to wrap this up, this story, is that he is hoping to find some, I don't know, in 2008, I mean, there was DNA and stuff. Um, I'm sure that they probably fingerprinted the car. Um, I don't know what the weather was like at that time. It was January. It could have been a warm day, though. You never know with eastern Kentucky weather. You know, it could be 90 degrees in January. But um, that's pretty much where this story leaves off. As of right now, it's a cold case. And if there's ever any update to this, the truth of the matter is, whoever this person was more than likely was from the area was from Perry County Breathitt County maybe even Knott County or even Letcher County they're all kind of real close together if this person was hitchhiking back towards Hazard this this is the theory he may, they may not even have been hitchhiking maybe he just saw them walking and offered them a ride um, and maybe they just saw an opportunity. Here's an old guy alone, you know, a story on that. And I'm going to end this video now and just say that it's a very good possibility that they knew this man. And it's also a good possibility that, like his family has said, he was just kind to strangers could have offered them a ride. It may not even have been a male. It could have been a female. And, um, you know, maybe one day this case will be solved. I don't know. But I'm gonna, my next story that I'm going to do is going to be about another missing man from eastern Kentucky uh, named um, Glenn Osborne. He's been missing from the area of Pike County since, I think, um, 2009, I think. I'll have to make sure about that. Thank you for listening.